Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is the first week in November, and there are a couple of Saturdays of NAI football yet to be played, but the playoffs are right around the corner, and that's what we want to talk about today. Teams that are likely to make the playoffs, teams that may not be necessarily likely, but still have a chance to make the playoffs, and teams that are still in the hunt possibly for a conference tournament championship, but may not make the playoffs. Anyway, we'll talk about that and more today here as we are looking at playoff possibilities in 2022. Now, there are 16 spots in the NAI National Football Championship. Of those 16 spots, 12 are awarded as automatic bids to conference champions if those conference champions make it into the top 20 in the final NAI football coaches poll. And so there's a possibility that a team could win a conference championship and still not make the playoffs. That does exist. Now, after those 12 spots are given automatically, there are four at-large bids as well. And again, possibly more depending upon who is in the top 20. So let's get started right now. And we're going to look at the AAC first, the Appalachian Conference Reinhardt is who Midwest Sportsnet is picking to win the conference. Now, the Reinhardt Eagles are number nine in the country right now, six and one overall, three and zero oh in conference play. Reinhardt has already defeated Bluefield, already defeated Point. Will play Point again this Saturday, November fifth, and beat Point by ten points earlier in the season. Point still has an opportunity to have some say in the conference title with a victory, but we believe. Reinhardt will be moving on in the uh, from the AAC and into the playoffs. Next conference is the Frontier Conference, and there are three teams still at play for a conference tournament championship. College of Idaho is the number 12 ranked team in the country, 7-1 and one overall, 7-1 and one in conference play. The Coyotes have already defeated Carroll, already defeated Rocky Mountain. The only loss was to the preseason favorite in the conference in Montana Western. Now, there's another big game coming up against Carroll. That is the final week of the season on November 12th. But College of Idaho is currently in the driver's seat with a one-game lead in the standings over both Carroll and Montana Tech. Now, College of Idaho, we mentioned number 12 in the standings. Carroll is also number 23 in the NAIA poll, and Rocky Mountain is not in the poll. So, We believe Rocky Mountain is out. We believe Montana Tech still could have something to say as Montana Tech is number 20 in the NAI rankings this week. College of Idaho does have the upper hand. They're in the driver's seat. We believe College of Idaho will make the playoffs, and there's a possibility of a second bid from the frontier. Not necessarily a given, but a possibility. The Great Plains Athletic Conference, the GPAC, is probably the best conference in all of NAI football. Now, there, of course, are 10 conferences, 12 teams with automatic bids because two of those conferences are split into two divisions. The GPAC, though, is a monster conference led, again, by the defending champions, Morningside. The Mustangs have won three of the last four NAIA championships, and Morningside is number one in the country right now, 8-0 in uh, conference play, 8-0 overall. Now, Morningside has victories over both Midland and Northwestern. So realistically, we have Morningside in. They're the defending champions. They're number one in the rankings. They have left on the schedule hosting Doan and at Concordia, Nebraska. Now, neither one of those are givens. The way Morningside's been playing, everything's a given at this point. However, we're not giving wins away, but we do believe Morningside will make it. That leaves Northwestern and Midland. Now, Northwestern is the number three ranked team in the country right now. Midland is the number 15 ranked team in the country. Both of them have only one loss in league play and a big game coming up on Saturday. This Saturday, November 5th, it's going to be Midland at Northwestern. Big game in Orange City. Northwestern may have a bit of advantage being at home. The way Midland's been playing, it could be anyone's game. We believe that Morningside will make the playoffs. We also believe that the winner of this game will get an at-large bid. That doesn't mean that the loser is necessarily out. The GPAC could be a three-team league, but we're going to give that second or that second bid to the league, that at-large bid, we believe will go to the winner of this game. We'll be able to talk about that more next week. Again, the loser, not necessarily out at this point in time. Let's go to one of those conferences that has two divisions, the North and the South in the heart of America conference. In the North division, it's Grandview, the number two team in the country, 
runners up nationally last year, falling to Morningside in that championship game, nine and zero overall, three and zero in Hart North Division play. Now Culver Stockton is five and four overall, also three and zero in North Division play. Those two teams are going to meet on Saturday. Grandview at Culver Stockton. Basically, the North Division is on the line. However, for a playoff spot, Grandview is, again, number two in the country. One loss might not necessarily knock them out. Even if Culver Stockton were to win this game and then go on to win and finish in the Hart North undefeated with a 5-0 and record, would be 7-4 and overall at that point in time. Culver Stockton's not in the top 25 right now. The Wildcats are a far shot from the top 20. So we don't think that Culver Stockton would make the playoffs even with a victory in its next two games. However, we do believe Grandview would. Of course, they would with the conference championship. They would remain in the top 20. And even with one loss, probably would get an at-large bid from there. That is a look at the Hart North. How about the Hart South? Well, a couple of teams still at play right there. Benedictine, the number six team in the country right now, and the Ravens have proven themselves over the course of this season, eight and one, a fantastic year so far, three and oh in Hart South play. Evangel is six and two overall, three and oh in Hart South play. Now, there's another team at play here also. Mid American Nazarene is two and one in Hart South play. Those teams are going to uh, have a lot on the line over the next few weeks, but the big game is the one on Saturday. Evangel at Benedictine. That is this Saturday, November 5th. Hart South likely on the line here. That is a big game. Don't forget, the following Saturday, the final week of the season, Benedictine's at Mid-American Nazarene. If Evangel beats Benedictine this week, and then Benedictine was able to come away with the victory next week, and lots of things on the line. Evangel is at Central Methodist the final week of the season. But the big game is this weekend, Evangel at Benedictine, and there's a lot on the line. Rankings, how do they come into play? Benedictine, number six in the country. A win almost assures them a playoff spot, but a loss doesn't necessarily take it away because they are so highly ranked. Evangel, on the other hand, not in the top 25 at six and two. Now, two more wins could allow the Valor to finish eight and two, and of course, could take that heart south. Lots on the line, not enough probably to get them into the top 25 or the top 20. So, Benedictine still likely the playoff berth going to them from the Hart South. All right, we continue on along and move on to the KCAC. And this is a mess at the top. It really is. Avila with one loss. Bethel with one loss. Southwestern with one loss. Kansas Wesleyan is factoring into this as well with two losses on the season. We'll talk about how the Coyotes come into play. Last year, there were three teams that shared the conference title in the KCAC. Bethel, Southwestern, Kansas Wesleyan. Bethel was on the outside looking in, uh, probably due to a, a, a loss at the end of the season. Not in NAI play, by the way. It was to West Texas A&M, but <clears throat> they were on the outside looking in. It was Southwestern and Kansas Wesleyan that moved into the playoffs. It could very well be three teams at the top with one loss again. Rankings would come into play. Avila currently at 7-1, and one, Bethel at 8-1, and one, Southwestern at 8-1, and one, but Southwestern takes on Kansas Wesleyan in the final game of the season, and the Coyotes could knock Southwestern out of the mix. And then it would be down to head-to-head with Avila and Bethel. Avila defeated Bethel earlier in the season. So that's what it's down to right now. Still a mess right now. Midwest Sports Net believes that Avila – or Bethel, again, the conference champion, will move on because both of them are currently in the top 20. Possibly there could be two teams from the KCAC. And if that's the case, uh, we like that a lot. The KCAC is a conference that's gotten stronger and stronger in football, so that could be the case again. Right now, current rankings have Southwestern at number 10 in the country, Bethel at number 13 in the country, and Avila at number 17 in the country. All right, we move on then to the Mid-South now. The Bethel, not Threshers this time, the Mid-South Bethel Wildcats are on a roll. Bethel, number four in the country, according to the coaches poll, 9-0 overall, 6-0 in Mid-South play. Continuing to roll, already with victories over Lindsey Wilson and Georgetown. So the big game coming up is Faulkner at Bethel this weekend. We believe Bethel is already 
has enough of a strength of schedule that the Wildcats will be in the playoffs, but they are pushing toward a conference championship to get the automatic bid. That leaves Lindsey Wilson and Georgetown both not necessarily on the outside looking in. Lindsey Wilson's the number eight team in the country. Lindsey Wilson won the national championship uh, prior to Morningside's victory in the fall of 2021. Lindsey Wilson won it in the spring of 2021. The Blue Raiders are likely in as well. But we're not going to count out Georgetown. The Tigers have had a fantastic season, number 18 in the country right now. A couple of more wins could put them in that position. So we think Bethel is in, Lindsey Wilson is in, and Georgetown could very well be in. All right, we move to the Mid-States Football Association, the Mid-East side. Indiana Wesleyan was the Midwest Sportsnet dark horse team to make the playoffs. And they're not a dark horse anymore. They have victories already. The Wildcats have victories already over Marion and Concordian, who were preseason favorites above them in the Mideast division. The number five team in the country, 7-1 and one overall, 5-0 and oh in conference play, with victories again over Marion and Concordia. We believe that Indiana Wesleyan will make the NAI football tournament. It's not re- really a bracket. We'll get to that in a moment. But the, the playoff field of 16. Indiana Wesleyan... Host Taylor this Saturday and host Madonna on November 12th. So Marion, however, is also in the mix as Marion is the number seven team in the country. We believe that Marion is also in and will get an at-large bid. Now, I know there are a lot of things that are going on in the play right here, but you continue on down through here. There are a lot of at-large bids we've already talked about. Well, what does this mean? Let's move on down a little bit further. Uh, One more, though, in the Mid-States Football Association, the Midwest Division, St. Xavier, the number 11 team in the country, St. Francis, the number 25 team in the country, Roosevelt, the number 16 team in the country. All these are still in the mix. St. Xavier and St. Francis will play on the final week of the season. Could both be undefeated in conference play at that point in time. The conference tournament championship on the line at that point. And at that point, it would mean an automatic bid because they're, they're not going to drop out of the top 25. Well, St. Francis still has to get into the top 20 at this point, but likely would be there with two wins at that point. Roosevelt has one loss. So let's look at it. St. Fr- Francis, St. Xavier, both with 5-0 and records in conference play. Roosevelt, 4-1 and in conference play. Big game on Saturday is Roosevelt at St. Francis. With a Roosevelt victory and a St. Francis loss, that means that it's not necessarily done. Roosevelt would still be in the mix because St. Francis could beat St. Xavier the next weekend. A lot to think about, a lot on the line. Nothing is necessarily going to be settled this week. Could clear up the picture a little bit, but it's a big game. Roosevelt at St. Francis, that is on Saturday. So uh, we believe that one bid will come out of the Midwest. It's possible there could be two, but at this point, we're looking at one bid coming out of the Midwest. I know, cards and letters. That's all right. Just just send them on in. How about the North Star? Dickinson State has won seven consecutive North Star football conference championships, looking to win an eighth, and it would be official with a victory This weekend, I believe, at Mayville State on on Saturday and then taking on presentation at home on November 12th. Dickinson State, the Blue Blue Hawks continue to roll. Here is where an issue comes in. Dickinson State is ranked 21st in the NAI football coaches top 25 poll. And at that point in time, Dickinson State, if the season were to end today, which it hasn't, but if it were, the Blue Hawks would be on the outside looking in. And there is precedent for this. This is not uh, something that hasn't happened before. It has. I think just a few years back, Langston in the Central States Football League won the conference championship, but was ranked number 21 and fell outside of the top 20. Langston did not receive a playoff berth that year. So Dickinson State needs to win a couple of games, but it's not entirely up to them. They need some help from the coaches or assistant coaches or whoever is voting in this poll, 19 coaches need to give Dickinson State just a little bit of help. <coughs> the Sooner Athletic Conference, and it's a mess in the SAC right now as well. Four teams with two losses. Texas Wesleyan may have the upper hand with a 7-2 and two record right now. 
and a half game lead over Arizona Christian, Langston, and OUAZ. However, all of them have two losses. Still a lot to be settled on the field. One of the games that's big is the Arizona Christian Langston game. Langston travels to Arizona Christian on Saturday, and the Firestorm and the Lions basically with an elimination game. That would leave Texas Wesleyan, the winner of that one, and Ottawa with two losses apiece. <coughs> Excuse me. So they move on through. The winner of this conference, as it all breaks down, we can get to the tiebreakers because we do know the tiebreakers here for this conference. Still yet to be seen because the only team ranked in the top 25 is Ottawa. OUAZ, the Spirit, ranked number 22. That is not in the top 20. And so right now, the Sooner Athletic Conference, even the conference champion, does not meet the criteria, according to the NAIA, to receive that automatic bid. We'll see what happens over the course of the next couple of weeks. But again, all these teams with two losses, it's a bit of a mess right now. Finally, we go to the Sun Conference. Kaiser, great season throughout NAIA play. Three losses on the schedule for Kaiser, and the Seahawks are uh, a team right now that is 6-3 and three overall, but 5-0 and oh in league play. Now, all of those losses have been to... Uh, and been out of NAI play. Division one loss, division two loss, division two loss. Kaiser is undefeated against NAI teams, and that's a big reason that Seahawks are ranked number 14 in the country right now. Now, don't count out St. Thomas. Kaiser will win the conference. We believe Kaiser, well, if they win the conference, they're going to get that automatic bid, likely not to drop below number 15. They'll stay in that top 20. St. Thomas playing for a spot as well, ranked number 19 in the country right now. St. Thomas is 7-2 and two on the season, not out of the talk for an at-large bid. So that's really an overview of the playoffs right now, some of the possibilities that are out there. As we are here on Midwest Sportsnet, we like to talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Which one of your teams do you think is going to for sure make the playoffs or for sure will be on the outside looking in? We've given you the possibilities today. Haven't gone through all of the teams entirely, but all of the ones that we believe have even a chance to win a conference tournament championship, or excuse me, a conference regular season championship, or make their way into the NAI field of 16. And we were talking all, also, by the way, let's throw this out there. It's not a true tournament, at least from the standpoint of a bracket as you would know it, because the bracket is in flux over the course of the entire uh series of games making its way through the playoffs. 16 teams come in, there are eight games, and then the NAI basically shuffles the deck around for the quarterfinals after that. We'll see how it all plays out. What do you think? Let us know here on Midwest Sportsnet. And please take the time, like this video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help. Thanks for watching today. God bless you. Have a great day.